This is Twit. Well, folks, it's now time for the bites. Now, the last episode of Twit, we had a great guest on, Tom Jamelik. He talked about the evolution of passwords and how passwordless revolution is upon us. Now, the question is, has passwords outlived its usefulness? Good question, right? Well, Bill Gates famously equipped uh, and talked about that password was dead back in 2004. Now, of course, his forecast might have been a little premature. Still, he was right when he said that the traditional password couldn't meet the challenge of creating or keeping critical information secure. Now, many researchers have pointed out that more than 80% of all data breaches could be attributed to poor passwords, if you think about it. Now, businesses know this, which is why they're constantly encouraging employees to create more complex passwords, right? And then they're also trying to layer out password security with things like two-step and certificate-based authentication. But while these technologies actually might help mitigate password vulnerabilities, they can't eradicate it. So we need to keep inventing ways of making passwords more secure, propping them up as a viable way to secure our data. For for example, two-step authentication does it exactly what it sounds like it does. They're requiring an additional step uh, in the login process beyond simply just an- entering your password. One, once the users enter the password, the password, the person's then sent a text message with a unique code or, or asked to generate one via authenticator. So, yes, it does add a layer of security, especially if the hacker steals your password, but it can't access the account unless you do also have that authenticator as well. Now, don't get me started on SMS-based MFA. Do, do yourself a favor. Definitely don't use it. Uh, that means you too, Bank of America. <laughs> um, excuse me. Unfortunately, MFA does add additional complexity to user flows. And uh, in fact, risk-based authentication is the next phase there, which involves asking users to jump through additional hoops if they exhibit user, you know, unusual login patterns, such as logging in from foreign country or via a new IP address. Um, that is actual, actually has similar issues as well. Now, they frustrate users and increase the login times. I know I've, I've had a bunch of issues recently with a uh, unnamed bank uh, that took me through about 20 minutes worth of that. Now, certificate-based authentication recognizes humans as a fallible guardian of their password and does away with them entirely instead of shifting the focus onto the network itself. A user or device can be granted network access for a set of period until the access expires, and it's as simple as that. Well, it's not that simple because this is only useful for particular circumstances and limits how and where the customers and employees can work. The question is, what's next, right? Well, last week, Tom talked about self signed certificates as a user on your client to replace those insecure passwords. Now, there are also SSO providers that we add into the mix. These are things that add more complexity, like Microsoft has AAD and Okta, and there's Ping and Forge Rock. But what does a person do to make this better? Uh, Curtis, I want to throw this to you first. I want to start with you. Is Bill Gates finally right here? Are passwords on the way out? Well, I think that passwords are on their way out in the same way that uh, internal combustion engines are on their way out. Um, (laughs) There is an inevitable direction of technology, and it leads away from passwords for all the reasons that that you explained there in the article. I mean, there there are uh, relatively few things that argue in passwords' favor other than the past that Uh, fact that we're used to them. And here's the fascinating thing. The the desirability for passwords in the minds of many users has nothing to do with their actual strength as judged from uh, a security perspective. They just feel more secure when they type in that password. So I think what we're going to see is this evolution where more and more two-factor authentication comes in and ultimately where you now have, say, a username, password, and some sort of biometric or token or additional challenge for the second factor, we're going to see more and more things with that biometric or um, or, uh, token-based factor plus something like a behavioral factor. Uh, Put those together, add in a username, and you've got access. One day, we're going to just wake up and realize that we haven't had to actually type a password for anything in the last month or two, and we'll realize that we enjoy leaving them behind. 
I definitely enjoy leaving my passwords behind. Cheaper, I want to throw this to you because with a lot of all the systems that organizations need to access, including IT pros, they need to access data admin access to different environments and different services. Do you think really passwords are going to go away anytime soon? I think passwords have their use if used properly. Um, I'm quite fond of passwords with a challenge. Um, type a password in and then a 2FA, you know, have a text message sent. That's I'm kind of fond of that. Now, there are systems that are go quite a bit further. You know, we have in the military, we, we've actually had people that have an electronic key. It, it, crypto keys actually look like physical keys and you actually have to physically turn them. So those are actually, I used to have one that I'd carry around my neck. Now, I couldn't just use it just by sticking it and turning it. I would have to unlock it. Even on my telephone, my secure telephone, I would have to type in a multi-digit code in order to unlock it. Um, this kind of thing, you know, something you have and something you know, I think is, I personally think it's a better model. Um, I don't like just having someone being able to take a biometric, say, off a um, cell phone or, or a tablet or something like that and get all the way in and get the keys to the kingdom. I'm very much in favor of just because you have something doesn't make it useful until you have something that you also know. So something you have and something you know, I think is the better model whether it's a combination of password with some sort of biometric or whether it's a biometric with some sort of authentication or, you know, acknowledgement, uh, something in that vein, I think, is what's going to have to happen. Otherwise, it's just a little too easy to go and steal someone's keys out of the bowl next to the front door and suddenly you have the keys to the kingdom. Uh, but that's, right. you know, my soapbox. <laughs> right now it's interesting cheaper said something you have something you know now i do remember the banks back in the day they you have the password right and then they ask you to answer a security question which most hackers can get you via social engineering and then something you know so it could be uh, uh you know again a, a additional maybe an, another ffa uh 2fa where, where they send an sms message but they know that now with cloning that can be uh you know also hacked as well curtis i want to throw back to you because you brought up behavioral factors as well that but that adds some more complexity to the system doesn't it well it can add complexity but much of it is in the background you know you mentioned some of the things that are big obvious uh behavioral things like like where we uh connect from what time of day we tend to connect uh what we do when we tend to connect, but I've talked to people in the behavioral factor world who use things like the precise speed and intervals with which you type the characters of your username or how you do things on a very, very precise basis. It turns out that those are quite consistent for a user from time to time that they log in. And being able to use those can be valuable for deciding whether or not an additional challenge should be issued. For example, if you are logging in when you would normally log in uh, from the IP address from which you would normally log in and you type your username in exactly the same pattern as you always do, well, a simple biometric factor might well be enough to grant access. You've got two factors and they're both enough. If on the other hand, any of those behavioral factors um, don't match up with your normal patterns, well then perhaps there's an additional um, factor that's introduced, say a code that is sent to your phone. And yes, I know about all of the SMS um, factor issues, or perhaps a key that goes to your mobile device, something else that makes sure that you are who you are without ever requiring you to 
memorize and input that 27 character mixed case with special characters and numbers password that you have to change every 48 hours. Right. I agree with that. So one more question to you, Chris, and we'll move on to the next bite. Um, you know, from an enterprise perspective, actually, obviously we talk a lot about zero trust and, and how, you know, you have this micro segmentation and, you know, organizations are asked to wrap security fences around all their resources. But now doesn't the adding these additional layers to things make the password even more of a problem? And that's why the organizations need to move away from it. Well, it, it literally depends on how the idea of micro-segmentation and zero trust is implemented. Um, in my opinion, implementing it in a way that requires the human user to re-authenticate over and over and over again is the least intelligent, most intrusive way to do it. And frankly, the way that will lead to a proliferation of um, backdoor applications being used in the enterprise. Users will quite rightly see this as a waste of their time and something that impinges on their productivity and shadow IT will be their answer. What this does is it actually gets back to our last week's conversation where we were talking about certificates of trust and hardware security and authentication. Because if the user has authenticated to their device, once they effectively authenticate to the network, then that device can do all of the additional authentications as you go through the multiple stages of micro-segmentation authentication and zero trust. So what you're doing is la adding layers of authentication, layers of security without adding additional stumbling blocks for legitimate users. Yes, it's more complicated for the IT and security staff, but the rewards in many cases are well worth that additional commitment.